watches on your TV screen. GB News is Freeview Channel 236. On Sky, we're Channel 515. 626 on Virgin Media. Just remember, you might need to retune your TV to watch the channel. Yeah, and if you are doing that, find out more about retuning by going to gbnews.uk. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilized conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. I'm Dan Wilson. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wilson tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. Hello there, I'm Eamon Holmes. And I'm Isabel Webster. And we hope you can join us for... Breakfast with Eamon. And Isabel. You make me laugh out loud, belly laugh. Is that important first thing in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. And there's me trying to be deadly serious. <laughs> News is a serious business. Yeah, I have to rein you in sometimes. Well, it doesn't stop us laughing at it. It doesn't stop us having an opinion on what's going on. Yeah. And it certainly will not stop us reflecting what you think. Weekdays from six to half past nine on GB News. Hello, I'm Karen Roberts. These are your latest headlines. Medical experts leading the UK's battle against COVID are among more than 1,200 people who have been recognised in the Queen's New Year Honours list. Knighthoods have been given to the UK's Chief Medical Advisor, Professor Chris Whitty, and his deputy, Jonathan Van Tam, as well as the Chief Medical Officers for Scotland and Wales for their efforts in the fight against COVID. Meanwhile, Sir Patrick Vallance, the UK government's chief scientific advisor, has been elevated to Knight Commander of the Order of the Bath after a successful sporting year. Tennis player Emma Raducanu and diver Tom Daly both receive MBEs. Separately from the main New Year Honours list, Buckingham Palace has announced that Tony Blair will also receive awards from Her Majesty the Queen. The former Prime Minister has been made a Knight Companion of the Most Noble Order of the Garter. One of his former Cabinet Ministers, Lady Amos, joins him and has become the first ever black member of the Order. While the Duchess of Cornwall has been recognised for her contribution to the monarchy, being appointed Royal Lady of the Most Noble Order of the Garter. The official state funeral for Archbishop Desmond Tutu has been taking place in South Africa today. Mourners have gathered in Cape Town to pay their respects to the late Nobel Peace Prize winner, who for years fought against racial injustice. President Cyril Ramaphosa, who delivered the main eulogy, paid tribute to his friend. If Archbishop Desmond Tutu were here, he would have said, hey, hey, why are you looking so glum, so unhappy? He would have wanted to elicit a smile, a laughter from amongst all of us. That was the type of person that he was. People gathered to hear London's Big Ben ring in the new year for the first time in four years last night as much of the UK welcomed 2022 with subdued celebrations. Thousands usually watch the show, but the ongoing spread of Omicron meant many stayed away and the traditional London fireworks display was cancelled. It was an even quieter affair in Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland, where Edinburgh's world-famous Hogmanay party was called off. Health bosses are warning the next few days are crucial in the fight to reduce the impact of the Omicron variant. Chris Hopson, the chief 
executive of NHS providers, which represents health trusts, says the NHS was under arguably more pressure compared with this time last year. It's as the health secretary says COVID measures must be an absolute last resort in 2022. Writing in the Daily Mail, Sajid Javid says the UK must learn to live alongside the virus. And Boris Johnson says he wants to maximise the benefits of Brexit this year. That's despite consumers being warned of fresh disruption due to new rules coming into force. From today, traders will no longer be able to delay completing full import customs declarations on goods entering the UK from the EU or other countries. Previously, they had a grace period of 175 days, but the British Frozen Food Federation has warned consumers to brace for disruption due to the change. That's your news update. I'll be back in an hour with the latest headlines. It's time to remind ourselves there's always another winter. Canary Islands sponsors the weather. Looking ahead to this evening's weather and the UK is looking dry with clear spells for many, though showers affecting the northwest and far southeast. Let's take a look at the details. A dry end to the day across the southwest. Cloud will thicken from the west later, though, ahead of showers or longer spells of rain arriving overnight. Mile 2. Scattered showers across the southeast will continue as we head into the evening, so it will be cloudy and in places damp at the end of the day. Across Wales, a dry start to the night is expected with some clear spells and it will remain mild. Here too, showers will return overnight though. It will be a dry evening across the Midlands with variable amounts of cloud and the occasional clear spell. It will remain breezy throughout though and mild for early January. After a mainly dry start, cloud and a band of showers will push slowly southeastwards across northeast England this evening, though they will ease as they do so. Showers will also affect southern Scotland for a while this evening, some turning heavy. These will then clear southeastwards to leave patchy cloud, remaining windy and mild though. In Northern Ireland, afternoon showers will clear through to this evening to leave it dry with the occasional clear spell. It will be windy, especially on the northern coast, staying mild. Showers that could be heavy at times will push eastwards, affecting many areas overnight, remaining windy and mild. Canary Islands sponsors the weather. Hello and welcome to our GB News Christmas special. I'm Esther McVeigh. And I'm Tonya Buxton and we are lucky enough to be at Casa Zilli where Chef Aldo is going to show us how to make the perfect Christmas lunch full of tips and hints to make sure yours goes perfectly too. We'll also be looking back at 2021 and also looking forward to 2022. So Aldo, Let's get cooking. Tonya, <laughs> Esther, you are such a beautiful ladies. And I am so honoured to have your cousins in the kitchen. <laughs> this is why well, we have Italians. This is it. <laughs> there you go. Give it some. Buongiorno, I should have said. Come Buongiorno. Come va? Come va? Eh, si, Buon si, Natale. Bene, bene. Buon Natale. Merry Christmas, first Buon of all. Buon Natale. Today is Christmas, so let's cook turkey and talk turkey and talk turkey <laughs> but you know lots of people get really stressed out about their christmas lunch don't they but simple things can just make sure that it just goes really well so what's your first what's the first thing you do in the morning when you wake up tony you know as chefs every year we have to do 200 programs on television <laughs> yeah. about the turkey yeah the main event what to do with it how to cook it how long for so 40 just to quickly 40 minutes per kilo that's the first thing to remember mm -hmm. for the turkey. Done. I've got one in the oven that's been in there for three hours. And what I do is I cook it for three hours upside down and then I take it out and I'll show you all the rest of it. And what all of us non-cooks, unlike you two, what us non-cooks want to know is how do you make sure it doesn't go dry? Ah, right. this, this is here we go. the first thing. Here you go. <laughs> We've got some vegetables here. We've got some carrots, onions, leeks and um, celery. you got a bit of garlic in there. All here, some garlic, And yes. what I like is you've kept the garlic in the skins. Why have you done that? Because right. it's 
stays nice and moist and in the end it just flavors the food but you don't need it. Yeah, so this tonya eventually will be my gravy. That's because be the base of the gravy, all the yes. flavors are coming and from there. And you kept the garlic in its skin. Now for us like, lay, lay people who don't cook, that's so your garlic doesn't burn. Because yes. a burned burn garlic, garlic is a bad it's a meal. It's no a go yeah. area. Okay, we've got this lovely bird here, four kilograms. <laughs> lovely. What we're going to do is we've got some butter which what we've done with this butter is we softened it a bit mm -hmm. and then we chopped lot of, lots of herbs, sage, rosemary and thyme. We just sort of made it a butter flavoured with all herbs but and sea salt. Sage, rosemary and thyme are the Christmas flavours, especially sage, aren't they? So I you've think, got, you've got to get so. some, whatever happens, you've got to get some sage into that and you've just so shove the, it in deeply. So make sure you go from the neck in, okay? And, a, and a, little, a little hint is if, you, if you're if you struggling, isn't it, to get the, sk the skin away from the flesh, is it, you, uh, get you, a spoon, a blunt well, spoon. Well, if you've got long nails, like my ladies here today. <laughs> yeah, not me. Uh, not cookie nails. <laughs> okay, not you, but you have. I know. So I that's why I, I didn't ask you to do this. <laughs> Thank you, Al. Don't Otherwise, don't. you get a spoon, like yeah, you, you said. Yeah, you get a spoon yeah. and, and gently um, ease the skin away from the and flesh. And Aldo, you do a lot of cooking for people who are dairy-free. So can they still do a similar... Of course, there's butter a lot of... Filling, but oh, oh yes. Butter. On the market now, for dairy-free people, there's loads of ingredients. There's a load of um, replacement for butter yeah. and uh, olive oil. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great friend. Because you know. it, being Italian traditionally, it would have been olive oil, Olive right? oil, yeah, yeah being, being Italian oil. traditionally. Yeah, but I think in Italy they do, they do this now. Yeah. They, they, they stuff the turkey. With, they put this, this butter with lots of herbs under the skin. Anyway... So, under the skin, on top of the skin. And just to say that all of this butter and all the turkey juices are going to melt into the into, veg, cook yeah. the veg, and that is going to make the best gravy. But, but, yes. but this is a, a nice, moist turkey. Mm. Moist gravy, everything's <laughs> going on in You're here. You're liking the moist, I, I aren't you? you. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm liking the gravy. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're going to... Put some lemons, orange, yep. and onions. You don't want to put the stuffing inside the turkey because it might not cook right. So and it it might kind of, can I just say, this is what I would always have done, is put a stuffing in the turkey. You're no. saying, no, don't do the stuffing. Look at you. No, 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 Esther. No, no. stuffing there. But you're putting in lemon. Oranges. Oranges, lemon. And what I'm, else? Onions And I'm there. massaging my flavor. birds. <laughs> I do like a massage, uh, massage the birds. <laughs> I can feel that turkey going, oh, please, my neck, my neck. <laughs> the reason that you don't put stuffing in the bird is because it stops it from cooking beautifully. It stops it from yep. uh, the air going around. So I know that, you know, it, you, old shows you always used to stuff the bird. It's not the best way to do it. And that's why Aldo's doing it this way, because this it's way it's going to so be flavoured. It's so good to have another chef in the kitchen. <laughs> you know that? I mean, uh, and, uh, this speaks English as well. <laughs> Just. <laughs> Just. Very, very few people can understand Just. what I'm talking about. So now what are you doing, Aldo? Now, you're not going to put it like that, are you? This is the, this is the, the bit where you need to do this, actually, yeah. because this I love do it, cooking it this way. Yeah. Okay. But that's so what keeps it moist. Everything, yeah, everything now is falling into those breasts, and the turkey is going to cook beautifully. Because okay. okay. I wouldn't traditionally, I would have had it that the legs were on the bottom, you're saying the legs on the top. The part of the turkey that gets dry is the breasts because that's got the least fat I'm going to wash it. my hands. So yeah. By turning it upside down and cooking it that way round, right. it means all the juices are in there, all the juices, the butter, the juice that's coming from the veg, the stuff that's there, inside I've the cavities, it, all you. constantly keeping it moist. That's, that's why you're here do. today. Just and obviously the giblets and the neck all goes in the same pot. Because that's going to add more flavour. Yeah, and then I, had I love bit, sage, so that's going in as an extra for me. I like sage. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of thyme. What I love, Aldo, is that you've got this beautiful land here, and there are so many herbs. So just now, when you needed thyme, you went out, you got <laughs> some thyme, and that's amazing. Because it's quite difficult to grow certain herbs in Britain. So thyme works really well, rosemary works really yes. well. Sage is not bad as well. So bay actually, leaves are good. Bay leaves are good. So Thank the you. Christmas ones work really well, don't they? The only thing I'm struggling to grow is basil. Oh. That needs that needs, needs, sun. Needs, sun. needs sun. So in the summer it's not too much of a problem, but in the winter it's uh, it, you know you need to grow it inside really. But anyway, so this is now my bird is ready. 
to go in the oven. Lovely. Nicely, really well tightly sealed. covered. Do you just do one layer of cling film, uh, sorry, uh, uh, tin foil or aluminium foil? I've read in some recipe books to do two layers. That's what oh, I'm you're doing. doing two layers. There you go. You oh, see, you do it right. You do it right. You're holding me down as yeah. absolutely knowing nothing about <laughs> cooking, but. And the thing is, to do the, to do things the day before yeah. a Christmas, it's crucial. Get ready. Get prep. Prep as much as possible. You know, we got carrots here, parsnips. We got uh, yeah. cabbage. We got um, uh, Celer celeriac. Po potatoes to to mash, we've got celery act, so everything is... All you're peeling the day before. All, yes. You don't lose any of the nutrients, because you're going to have to leave them in water then overnight if you've so, done it the day before. But then you put them in the but, same water. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Can Check I go? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Shall I help you? I wouldn't want Just to stop with... a man in the kitchen, I One goes in, one goes out. There we go. <laughs> what can possibly go and on here? And that smells magic. incredible. Right, so the main event is here. This has been in the oven for three hours, upside down, breast down. Now we've got to turn it the other way and put it back in the oven with some pancetta. Wow. wow. Look at that. I, I think this turkey is ready, my friend. I think you're right. So here we go. Turn my baby round. Mm -hmm. So we, we're going to blast it back in the oven with some pancetta on top. And we're going to put the vegetables on the stove to cook. And then we're done. That looks good. So the turkey's been in the oven for three hours. You've turned the bird over. And now, are you giving a little dressing to I've the I've dressed breasts? it with some pancetta. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just going to blast it to cook the pancetta on the outside, nice and crispy. Bring it out. Now, the, the mistake everybody makes is to eat the turkey too early. The turkey's been in the, hours for, in the oven for three hours. You rest it for three hours. Yep. And do you know what's really, really good about that is that you can then take the turkey, rest it for three hours, and then, and then you've got a lovely else. free oven. And how important for your potatoes and everything. How important was the sage that you just did two little pieces mm, of sage yeah. on top? It's important. Yes. It's all flavour. It's all flavour. We're building flavours here. Right, let me help. And you. it smells. You know the smell of, of sage. As soon as you put it on on heat, it just smells beautiful. Thank you. There we go. We all need a toddy in the kitchen. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now turn the oven to two hundred. Nice and high, so just nice really high. just cook off that pancetta, that bacon, whatever it. you're using. What's next? Turkey's in the oven. Now, the last half an hour is time for you to get yourself prepped with everything else. So, I've got some celeriac and mashed potato. Mm -hmm. Very, very good combination. Mm. Great marriage. Even better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> parsnips. Parsnips. Mm -hmm. Roasted parsnips with a little bit of honey, which we'll do in a minute. This is the mash, but the mash is actually not going with my turkey. My turkey is going to go with goose fat roasted potatoes. Okay, so we've got carrots here with honey, star anise, and butter. All of this are going onto the stove here now. All of this is going to be cooked. Now I'm going to make my stuffing. I've got all my ingredients here, so we're Sorry. going to mix them in this bowl. A little bit of sage here. Can you pass me the knife, darling? Grazie. When you buy knives also, this is a chopping knife. It's got a, a little gap there to, for your finger to chop, okay? This is a filleted knife. It's really thin and very, very sharp for filleting. Just different knives for different, for different use in the kitchen. And keep them really, really sharp all the time. Yeah. And don't look at other people when you're chopping. Yeah, see? <laughs> I can't do that. I can't do that. It's, it's, it's been, I've tried and tried and tried. I cannot do it. So that's why I always say, I'm a cook and he's a chef. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I keep my eyes closely on the knife, yeah. see what's happening there. No. Take it. Aldo, can I just ask you a question? You talked about the sausage meat there with fennel, Italian sausage meat. Right, so how do you get it? Do you buy them? sausage meat and chop the fennel in? Do you buy sausages and squeeze it out? How do you get it? Just get the best quality sausage you can find. And then squeeze and then the squeeze meat out it. from inside. Okay, then I can do that. You can find it in supermarkets. No, there's, there's, everything is in the supermarket nowadays. You can cheat. However you want. And also, you can get if you want to get specialist stuff like Italian sausages or, or Mediterranean, whatever you're getting. On, online now, you can get whatever you like. So it's, you're not 
just if you live in a little village and you can't get things from your local, you can, for these special events, maybe order them in. Because it does make a difference. Because fennel in the sausage meat, it, it, it just makes it, doesn't it? When you're doing things like this, this is a stuffing for your turkey. You know, it's, it's really important. We're messing around with people's Christmas here. Yeah. You know, you, you've got <laughs> to do it right. You've got to do it right. You've got, and also, you're inviting this year, hopefully, you know, uh, we're going to have everyone together again. Yes. So it's going to be, we haven't had this. And also the, the ingredients are, you know, the apples raw, onions raw, because this is all yes. going in the oven. So, yeah. so these are beautifully made. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to put them in the oven. Gloves off. How long would you put these in the oven for, Aldo? <laughs> Don't forget it's raw pork. Yes. So it needs to be cooked uh -huh. properly. So I would put this in the oven for a, Half an hour, 25 minutes, half yeah. an hour. Yeah, and, and I don't mind if it gets a bit, I like a crispy. A bit crispy is so, yeah, even better. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So in the oven, put the oven in, 180, 190, in there. Right, let me okay. hear you clear. Now we have let a little bit of clear up. Hello there, I'm Eamon. And I'm Isabel. And you're watching the GB News digital stream across the United Kingdom. And around the world. If you're here in the UK, you can also watch us on your TV screen. GB News is Freeview Channel 236. On Sky, we're Channel 515. 626 on Virgin Media. Just remember, you might need to retune your TV to watch the channel. Yeah, and if you are doing that, find out more about retuning by going to gbnews.uk. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate. And I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilized conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. I'm Dan Wilson. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wilson tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. Hello there, I'm Eamon Holmes. And I'm Isabel Webster. And we hope you can join us for... Breakfast with Eamon. And Isabel. You make me laugh out loud, belly laugh. Is that important first thing in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. And there's me trying to be deadly serious. <laughs> News is a serious business. Yeah, I have to rein you in sometimes. Well, it doesn't stop us laughing at it. It doesn't stop us having an opinion on what's going on. Yeah. And it certainly will not stop us reflecting what you think. Weekdays from six to half past nine on GB News. is Andrew Doyle. Join me every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. for Free Speech Nation. This is a show where we address current affairs and news stories of the week with the help of two wonderful comedian panelists. I brought in comics because I want to give it a lighter edge and also they work for less. See you there. Join me, Mark White, here on GB News. For more than two decades, I've been at the sharp end of reporting crime and security at home and abroad. From the scourge of terrorism to the fight against violent crime and the deepening small boats crisis in the channel, there are issues you rightly care about, and so do I. As GB News Home and Security Editor, my focus will be on the stories that matter to you. I personally am not a fan. You love them, don't you? I me? love sprouts. So when I when I make Brussels sprouts, I, I think I do very similar to Aldo's. I do everything I can to disguise the smell of sprouts by adding pancetta, pancetta, which will do pancetta it perfectly. Pancetta and nuts. Yeah. So what do you do with your sprouts? Okay. Then? So now the cooking of the sprouts. You can leave this until the last ten minutes mm -hmm. because I like to cook these and eat them. Straight away. I don't like boiling them, then leaving them, sogging, 
no. horrible, no. sprouty. <laughs> no. These are cut in half, baby sprouts. Okay, you can eat these as they are, raw, like this. Very nice and very good for you, by the way, yes. sprouts. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, this is edge. a massive cabbage in, reduced into yeah. a little one. So, now, pancetta is probably a good ingredient for you. Oh, why is that? Because isn't it? Um, you, dairy you, free. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not going to put butter in it. Yeah. So this is good for you. Oh, enough this is got it's on fat. Pancetta and in the meat. This is got it's on fat and. Uh, you know, when you render the fat on a pancetta, I put it in a cold pan, put it in on the, onto the stove, and let the pancetta come slowly. A lot of people make the mistake of putting it in a very, very hot pan, put the pancetta in and burn it, mm -hmm. and then you don't get any flavor, you don't get nothing. So this is the best way of doing it. Let it cook together. So you've got pancetta, you've got sprouts, and what's the other ingredient? Mini, mini cabbage. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got some chestnuts. Mm -hmm. It's Christmas. You know, I mean, you don't have to put chestnuts in. No, but it adds to it's the texture, it adds but to I, the flavour, it's actually, lovely. I am such a big fan of chestnuts. In Italy, on the sides of the road, now in this, this time of year, you see all these barbecues with chestnuts, full yeah. of chestnuts. Yeah, they those. open the, the, that lid and you go near it and it's like amazing. Well, I did that in London, in a, on a market in London not long ago. And I went, I went there, I, I got a bag of chestnuts, three pounds, and they were all raw. Oh, they didn't cook them well. Raw, they weren't no. cooked. Um. They have to burn the outside. They have to really cook these. Otherwise, otherwise it's like, well, you know. Well, chestnuts cooking on an open fire. See, it's Christmas. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's not me. They haven't had anything to drink yet. They haven't had to drink yet. Can promise you, you the, the champagne is still in the fridge. Yeah, yes. the important word there, Aldo, was yet. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so it is happening. So this is going on my Wonderful. stove. And on a nice low heat, so it cooks nice and slowly through, 100%. right? Yeah. In the meantime, whilst that's cooking, and that's literally 10 minutes before, what are you doing to your other veg? I think we need to talk about these lovely potatoes. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Me. But they, without potatoes, where would we be? No, I mean, the, there's right. a, there's, the whole thing is in our family is who gets the rest, best roast potatoes. I did make some potatoes this morning, but unless someone's eaten them, I they're can't see them on the, here. What on the we table. What do with here. them? Here we go. Oh, oh there, there they, they are. Here Look, we go, the cameraman through. had them very close to his camera. <laughs> My roast potatoes in goose fat. Before roasting, little blanche, not too much actually. But what I do is I put the garlic inside into the water into the into the water sort of boil the garlic with the potatoes if you mm -hmm. like and then put them in the potatoes inside the oven mm -hmm. so it flavors and i put the herbs in the, the rosemary and the thyme and then i take it all out and these are just flavored now then you can't see burned rosemary you know when you see yeah, yeah. burned yeah, rosemary yeah, yeah. burned that. herbs nobody wants that burned garlic <laughs> on christmas day you don't want anything burned but isn't the trick, once you've parboiled them a little bit, but not too much, just blanch them, you have to shake them a little bit so they get a bit yeah. rough on the edges. Yes. Like, like these ones here, you like can see these, them there. Look, yeah. yeah, perfect. So they're like a these bit... ones here. These yeah. have just been sort of blanched, and look, the garlic has been inside with them. So these now, with some goose fat, go in the oven for perfect. 20 minutes. You blanch them, you boil them, and you think, oh my God, I've overboiled them. No. You put them in the oven and they come back alive again. Exactly. It's really, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that nobody really knows how it's a Christmas what happens. miracle, Alex. Yeah. It's a miracle, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you the miracles for me today. <laughs> but potatoes are really important. And also, you just said 20 minutes. The thing is, check you've got a really good hot oven because if, it, yeah. if it's not hot, you've got to give yourself extra time. I'm saying that I've been there when everything else was ready. 190? Yeah, 190, nice and high. Give them a shake halfway through so they get that lovely crispiness. Oh, yes. And then you're done. Well, what? here you go. Here's your roasting dish. We've got some lovely goose, goose fat. fat there. Obviously, you know, if you're doing this at home, it's Christmas Day and you're cooking for 20 people, don't take any notice of this because we're cooking only for the, us here, for three of us. Uh -huh. But normally on Christmas Day, people cook for a lot more than three people. Yeah. But goose fat, the most important thing here now is you don't want to put the potato straight in there. You've got to put this in the oven. Yeah. This has got to be smoky. Nice and hot. Okay. Really nice. So we put this in the oven for a bit. Because if, if you don't do that, then they won't be crispy. They'll no. get soggy and they'll suck in all the fat. So the oil needs to be nice and hot to make sure it crisps up, crisps up the outside. Yeah. We're going to leave that in the oven for not long at all, and then we bring it out 
put the potatoes in that we launched, mm -hmm. put them in, and then roast. Perfect. For 20, perfect. 20 to 25 to half an hour. Okay, the goose fat is now nice and nice hot. Nice and hot. Almost boiling hot. Very, very careful with this, by the way, everyone. Uh -huh. You can leave the oven open, okay. open because I'm going to go back in it. And now you drop the potatoes in. Okay. There you go. And the garlic. Goes in as well. In the, the jacket. Yeah. The garlic so that you can squeeze it at the end and eat it. Oh, oh so mamma good. mia. That's so good. That is so good. And then good. the last five, ten minutes, I like to add my rosemary and thyme because otherwise it burns. Mm -hmm. Okay. Off we go. Now these sprouts here are doing a great job. Brilliant. It smells amazing. I'm the biggest tosser in town. <laughs> so what are, what are the Italian specialities you do for Christmas? In Italy, they make dough to make some bread on Christmas Day. So I've got something here that I made some pizza dough. But those that don't make dough, can you buy the ready-made one and do what you're going to do now? Hundred percent. You can buy this already made. You leave it in the fridge overnight, mm -hmm. and then the next day it will turn into something like this. It's like double the size. Yes. Yeah, then what done. you do? Put it. Bring it all together. Get it off the tray completely. But Beautiful. don't add flour now at this point. Okay. Oh, so basically, okay. you're reworking the dough. How many times do you have to read it work the dough? Three times. Three times. So now we, what we do is we rework it like this, then we pick it up. Mm -hmm. Look at these l bubbles. Look, they, <laughs> they're all going to be so important because this is going to be so light. The more time you let it regrow yeah. or re prune, if you like, mm -hmm. the, the more light it becomes and it's like, a, like fluff at the end. Okay? So, and some this is olive oil. Focaccia style bread, Focaccia right? style, yes. Yeah, but it's, so. it's bread. You can, you can put anything on this. Tuck it in like yeah. this. Put some olive oil so it doesn't stick. Mm -hmm. Some olive oil on top of it. Mm -hmm. Some sea salt. Cover it with clean film. And this needs to double the size again. Then you knock it back again. And you leave it to, again to go over. Double the size again. Then you knock it back. And you cover it with whatever flavor you want in the oven and it'd be the Perfect. fluffiest bread ever, okay? And now what happens here? We cover this with clean film, we let it grow again, double the size. In a nice warm kitchen, in somewhere a nice, nice warm and warm. kitchen like this one. Yeah. Clean film done, done. That's it, that's now gonna be somewhere warm near the stove. And that's a lovely Italian twist on an on English Christmas, isn't that's it? That's a great Italian twist on bread of the, People normally will go and buy bread yeah. on Christmas so Day. Nothing wrong with it, but hey. <laughs> the other thing that people do is that they buy ready uh, pigs in blankets already made for them. But that's yeah. crazy. So you're going you're gonna to quickly show us how you make your 150% I'm going to show there you. Are. These are little sausages, cipollata. Again, fennel inside. It's got lovely, lovely flavours, which I love. But, you know, if you don't love these flavours, just get yourself some it's, pigs in blanket. Everyone should be trying to go local. If you've got a local butcher, exactly. go to exactly. them and ask them to make you sausages. Normally they do, actually. So what we do is we chop some sage, right? And talk at the same time to yes. all your friends around the kitchen like yes. this. Okay? <laughs> it stresses me out. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then what we do, look, these are simple rolled ones, in pancetta. Yeah. Okay? Not bacon, pancetta. Um, I mean, you can wrap it in bacon if you want. You can, but pancetta's got more fat and it's thinner, isn't but it? But so pancetta for me just has that bit extra of... Extra smokiness. Yeah, it's the pork belly, you know. But when you make carbonara, everybody uses pancetta. No, guanciale, cheek. Cheek, oh of really? The, of the pig, not the belly. Ah. Oh. Okay, so but carbonara comes from Rome. Carbonari were the coal miners that right. had chickens, they had chickens and pigs. So those are the two ingredients for carbonara. Eggs and pancetta. I didn't know that. And pecorino cheese from Rome. Pe ah, not parmesan, pecorino. Pecorino cheese. Okay, okay. so there you know. So that's, that's just a little tip for Thank if you're you, making so carbonara this Christmas. So now look, <laughs> I'm gonna do a little variation here with sage. So 
this little pig went to market. Yeah. She's <laughs> <laughs> in there already. <laughs> this little pig, I got it from the market. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do a little sage pigs in blanket. Okay, this Christmas, you guys need to try these because this, this Christmas will change your life. When I'm cooking for turkey for a lot of the kids, I, I've noticed that they don't actually eat the turkey that I've put so much effort in. All they want are the pigs in blankets. So I always do extra pigs in blankets. Well, Twiggy, my 13-year-old, she's not big on eating meat uh, at all, actually. Um, I don't know why, but she's not big on white meat either. Mm. You know, she has a bit of chicken in there. But when it comes to Christmas, she sits down. Pigs in she blankets. She wants a big plate of this. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. So I said, the kids love them. They yeah. love pigs in blankets. What that's is true. it with pigs in blankets? It's like, and these particular ones, you can, I dare you to serve them as a, as a um, little canopy. Oh, see, they're perfect. Yes. White size, you know? absolutely yeah. perfect. Even if you cut them in half, yeah. you know, you, you cook them and then you cut them in half, perfecto for a little, little canopy. Okay. Uh, and then I think I I've done enough pigs in blanket here. Okay, that's enough there. Now we're going to put and again, them like they this. go in the oven. They go. They're literally one of the last things to go in the oven because yeah. they need what, 15, 20 minutes max. Maximum. Okay. We're going to put them in the oven now. Okay. Okay. These. Can so be we've talked late. a lot about Christmas favourites. Yeah. But what if you're the kind of person that just doesn't like the bird? What well, do you do? Well, if you don't like the bird, then in Italy. Okay, we're big on lamb. Mm -hmm. We're big on pig. Porchetta actually, is another good thing. It's the Greeks that are actually the lamb people, but they like to take it on. No, to it's. <laughs> listen, yeah. listen. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. No, no, I've got to tell you something I, before you say it. The Welsh that. lamb. We oh, like oh, the sorry, lamb. The well, we actually, like the actually, lamb. you're right. <laughs> That's fair. But enough. listen to this, right? We, I used to um, have Tonya as my guest at my radio show in London. She said. She claimed one day yeah. that they invented pizza. We did. The Greeks, <laughs> the Greeks did. You did. We did. How dare you? Well, we took, we took, a, we, we took a, a bitter base mm -hmm. to Napoli and we taught the Italians how to make pizza. Well, I think it all started in Liverpool with cheese on toast, <laughs> if you don't mind me saying. <laughs> oh, God, forget it. We, we can't be, we, we, we cannot be Esther on that one. Where's the pineapple? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, so what do you have here? We have a shoulder of lamb, a, li a baby shoulder of lamb here, a small one, okay? Because it's, I'm only cooking for a small family. Right. So this has been marinating in white wine rather than red wine. Mm -hmm. Lamb, I prefer with white wine, it's lighter, mm -hmm. it's, it's, okay. and it flavors the lamb unbelievably. So I stubbed it, I scored it, look. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so the Holes. flavors can go in. Yeah. Can, and then what we do is we just, Start it with rosemary. So this is the alternative lamb dish for Christmas. Yeah. This is, yeah. You know, you can do this with lamb, you can do this with beef. And now I'm going to put in this little holes Pockets here. here, yeah. I'm going to put some garlic in there or rosemary. Oh. And if you can fit it in, maybe an anchovy or two. Is anchovies add all the flavour? The anchovy is the seasoning. You don't need salt now, because the anchovy is very salty. OK, here we go. This pan, when you, when you want to feel if the pan is hot enough, you just go like that, and it's got to be this height. Yeah. The height of the rim of the pan, you almost need to be feeling too hot, and that's it, it's ready. Okay, so I'm going to lift it with my hand. We're going to sear this <coughs> on both sides. The rest of it, all my wine and my vegetables here, I'm going to go into this pan here and cook down, reduce down before I add my stock. Because I want the wine to sort of reduce and <clears throat> lose that alcohol flavor. So it's nice that you reduce the wine first. Even when you make an, a red wine sauce, it's always very good to reduce the red wine so that you get rid of all that horrible alcohol flavor. And then you you sear the lamb on both sides really, really well because you want that meat to be seared. All the flavours are going to stay inside. All the marination you've done overnight, that's worth something now. Trust me, that is worth every penny that you bought that lamb for. 
All right, so that is, these steps are really, really important. And also, what's really important is that wine that has been marinating, it's now in there reducing. So you've got to reduce that wine, get rid of the alcohol flavor. You know. The, yeah, just, just to reduce one. it down, thicken it yeah. up, sweeten it a bit, get rid of that kind of sharp alcohol hit to it. Yes, and then at it this point, it. at this point, I like to drop a little bit of sea salt in there and season it. Look at that. I mean, that, that to me looks good enough for already to eat. It does. Okay, so that's seared in one side. Let's see the other side. That's Look it. at that. Lovely. Look at that. Okay. The flavors are all, you know, infusing that lamb. So you sear it on the other side, then you put it in a roasting tin. Stock. Now, for this particular dish, I actually like to use chicken stock. I think beef stock is too strong, and lamb stock I'm not happy with. So chicken stock, and the lamb itself is going to release all our lamb flavor anyway. So that's going to be with the vegetables, with the stock and the wine covered in the oven for at least four hours. You said to put it in the oven for at least four hours, but you can have it for longer. You can have it all day if you like, <laughs> as long as it's nice and low, right? About 150? About 150. Yeah. Hello there, I'm Eamon. And I'm Isabel. And you're watching the GB News digital stream across the United Kingdom. And around the world. If you're here in the UK, you can also watch us on your TV screen. GB News is Freeview Channel 236. On Sky, we're Channel 515. 626 on Virgin Media. Just remember, you might need to retune your TV to watch the channel. Yeah, and if you are doing that, find out more about retuning by going to gbnews.uk. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilized conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. I'm Dan Wilson. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wilson tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. Hello there, I'm Eamon Holmes. And I'm Isabel Webster. And we hope you can join us for... Breakfast with Eamon. And Isabel. You make me laugh out loud, belly laugh. Is that important first thing in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. And there's me trying to be deadly serious. <laughs> News is a serious business. Yeah, I have to rein you in sometimes. Well, it doesn't stop us laughing at it. It doesn't stop us having an opinion on what's going on. Yeah. And it certainly will not stop us reflecting what you think. Weekdays from six to half past nine on GB News. Seared beautifully. You bring that over, I'll bring your stock over. Che bello il mio agnello. Che bello il mio agnello. It rhymes as well. <laughs> what is che bello? Good looking. Che bello. Che bello means how beautiful is my land. It's beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, beautiful. so out of this I'm pan move now. This out the way. Okay. Out of this pan. Now, this pan is probably the most important thing about this lamb in this recipe. Look at that. Right, so you You've got to deglaze that pan. Mm -hmm. Because that pan's got the fat, that bit of fat of the lamb, that's going to go back in, into the lamb. And then, darling, if you can bring the chicken stock. Yes, bring the stock Thank over, you. absolutely. Do okay, you Tonya, let's add little bits now, like a couple of more anchovies, more, some chicken flavor. stock. Lovely. Yeah. It's so all about flavour now. Some more herbs. A little bit more, huh? Some more garlic. <laughs> so halfway up the pan? Yeah, yeah, go, go for it, go for it. Go, oh, this disaster. smells so good already. And we haven't cooked anything yet. Cooked Imagine in four or five hours' time what this lamb, A, what's going to look like. But it's going to, it's literally going to fall off the bone. It's going to fall but off and just be amazing. Get your clefty cough. This is, 
al dozzilli agnello can I, can I just alla romana. Everything the Italians do with lamb, they learned firstly from the Greeks. I'm not saying you didn't change We've the flavour. We learned everything. Bit, yes, we learned everything from you. It started with the Greeks. Like we learned <laughs> to make pizza in Naples, <laughs> in the Margherita. Thank God we got the Greca. <laughs> Listen, you know it's true. Margherita la Greca, I'm going to call you. <laughs> That's it. See, the good mind. thing is, as they argue between the two of them, I will do most of the eating. eating. <laughs> I'll do the eating as they battle out who right. came Goodbye, up with the, lamb the recipe Goodbye, lamb, three hours, four hours. There we are. Here we go. On he goes. Perfect. Lamb in the oven. Right, now... so there's one really important thing about the Christmas meal that we haven't done yet. The gravy. The gravy. The groovy gravy. <laughs> 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 You've got the bottom of where the turkey was cooked, so we've got the veg, we had onions, we had celery, we have carrots. Look at these. Just garlic. Just so good, Look we had some that. garlic that is... in there, and, the, and you've got the giblets, you've got the neck that you can still see there. That's worth That's a couple that, of hundred quid. It, it, really, it really is. <laughs> it, it, that is what if makes it, isn't me. it? So what are you doing to make your gravy? Right, now I'm gonna make it worth even more. I'm gonna <laughs> add some chicken stock. <laughs> Okay, I'm now, gonna if you're doing this, you do this on top of the hob and you do it with yeah. a bit of heat coming through. Fresh cranberries or cranberry sauce, but I don't have any cranberry sauce. But you know, you do, you do, you do. Oh, my baby, my broken, my cranberry <laughs> sauce. I'm going to say I, brought, I bought you a little present. I made this for you last night. Here oh, you go. This is my cranberry me. And I need you to taste it and tell me your thoughts. Wow, look at this orange peel in it. Look at this. Oh. It's Christmas, finally. Lovely. There you go. Tell me Merry your thoughts. Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you, Aldomo. Oh, God. Oh, you see, I knew he was going to do that. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. But I need another spoon now because I can't double dip. Okay, no double dipping. Yes, this is I'm... quite tart, sweet, and it's got cinnamon yeah. sticks and cinnamon what in there. What have you got in here? That's a big old cinnamon stick. Wow. Shall I put it in there? Put it in there for the gravy, absolutely. Okay, like well, I'm, oh, so I'm, it's a lot. I'm, I'm, it. taking, I'm taking your lead now. There we go. Okay, bit of flour. That was a lot of cranberry. Oh, sweet it's gonna be gravy sweet. now. Now I need some red vino that is being reducing. Here we go, I've got that for you here. So that's been on the heat, reducing again. And the reason you reduce is to take away that alcoholic Flavor. edge. Shall I pour in? Yes, please. Oh, Grazie. You've got to do something. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Sorry. Sing maybe. for your supper. <laughs> Maybe half of that. Go on, keep going, keep going. You keep telling me when. Keep going, keep going, keep going. This looks like a bit of a mess at the moment. It but does, but it's, once it's done, it's gonna that's taste it. That's amazing. enough. Thank you. That's now going to go on the stove and cook down, and keep stirring it, cooking it, and then what you do at the end is you sieve it, sieve it, and cook it again for about ten minutes. Reduce it again and that is your best gravy that you probably have this Natale, which is Christmas. All I can say, I know at home you can't get the smells through the TV, but that smells magnificent. Christmassy. Christmassy. And very Christmassy. It's a cranberry sauce. It's a cinnamon in my cranberry <laughs> sauce. So while Aldo finishes off the gravy and carves the turkey and serves us the potatoes, I think that Esther and I are ready for a little glass of something. And Sh reapply your lipstick. Red, mm -hmm. white, champagne, or oh, Negroni. Do you want me to make you a Negroni? Should we have a quick Negroni? Quick right, Negroni. Come on, come quick on. Negroni. Let's do it. Let's right do it. Here, come right. on, grab it in. Let's some grab ice, please. Agreements. Give me some ice. Quick. Come on, we've got a crew quick. here. That Where's can the bottles in the ice? gone? Where are my bottles gone? Two glasses. Come on. Come on, we can this do this. This is ready, steady, cook now. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> come yeah, on. Done, ready, steady, cook. Come on, we can do this. Slice me some oranges. Oh, I've got. That's how orange. We go. Orange, here we go. Let me just use this knife. Okay. Just, so you want slices, right? Negroni. Let's talk about the ingredients that go in the Negroni. Campari. In. Gin. In. Equal oh. measures, remember, equal measures. Vermouth. In. Oh bread. Oh my god. Equal <laughs> measures, okay? Yes. This is. Yes. Do you want some orange There's juice no as well? room for any soft drinks in this drink, okay? <laughs> we need two. Shot glasses, please. Behind there, there's some shot glasses. I'll get them. Do you want me to shake it? Them. I'll get them. Now you can do the shaking. I'm doing the shake, shaking. Shake, shake, shake. Come on. Shake, shake, Let's shake. have a sip of Negroni. Two shot glasses. 
And, and hey, look at that. She's shaking the Negroni all over the shop. <laughs> the top came off the Negroni, mamma mia. Oh, God right. help us. Chaos, chaos, let's go. Whoa, Uno. Wow. Wow. Due. Look at that. Oh, I'm my God. Toast. Look at this. Look at this. This. Look at this. <laughs> this is the money shot. Look at that cocktail. Bellissimo. This is going to change you, my it's gonna Christmas. Change Christmas life. It is, it's going to change your Christmas. <laughs> my Christmas is. is completely different with this. Groovy gravy. That's, groovy gravy. This is the new word for gravy. Groovy. It's the groovy gravy. There we go, serve me. Thank you. A lovely. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm quite looking forward to eating something. Oh, some, I really something. am looking forward to it. Mm. The stuffing's amazing. Really good. It's good. Opa. Mmm. 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 Mm. Okay, so normally, because I'm not the biggest sprout fan, I would overcook my sprouts and then I would put a pancetta and sage butter on top. But I'm going to do it this way this year. Really? I am. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't, you know what? My Tonya does what I did. There we go. It's good enough for me. Um, that makes me happy too. If it's good enough for Tonya Bucks, it's good enough for me, trust me. <laughs> and that stuffing mm. is divine. Mm -mm. We'll all be copying the stuffing. Mm. Yes. So, yes. But. Aldo, what kind of year has 2021 been for you? What's happened? What have you had to do? Have you done things differently? What's been going on? Well, 2020 was pretty bad. And I thought 2021 can't get much worse. But 2021, I've recreated my brand again, the Aldo Zilli brand, because, you know, I mean, in the pandemic, everything kind of went a bit pear-shaped so I had to rethink my um, my business I had to do a business plan to to carry on and instead of doing takeaways and deliveries uh, in 2020 was very very popular I had to rethink how I'm gonna carry on and do business and it was from a, home. it's been a bad year for so many people and the hospitality it's been so so difficult so you went first of all in 2020 to do delivery to change Take things aways. and then 21 you've done this, this spectacular at home at home at home with Aldo it's been very very successful I mean we've had some really amazing people here dining and people come here to make memories mm. For the so, experience. So it's not just about the food, is it? It's about sitting in these beautiful pods with these beautiful lights and the whole experience. It's the drama and the theatre of eating well. And we're in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was a touch and go for me with the council to get a, um, a liquor licence, to get an alcohol licence. But once I got alcohol licence, everybody now is like, they can drink a great wine with the great food. And that's what you want. You know, yeah, you go and have great food. So what I want to say, where you're sitting, where I'm sitting Tonya, right earlier here. this month, you were making dinner for Dame Judi Dench for a birthday. Yes, she's been a big, big friend and fan for years in Zilly Fish in Soho. And when she discovered that I lived near her. <laughs> that was it. She was like, and then she said to me when, before she left, she said, don't you think you're gonna get rid of me? Because I will be back next week. And she's already booked for next week. Wow. So yeah, so she's- So that's lovely, isn't it? It's that's great, really, it's great. But who else are you most proud of cooking for? Especially in this past difficult year. I've cooked for people that have turned up here in helicopters. They <laughs> just landed just here. Oh, the um, life that some lead. A lot of people come in helicopters here because they can land in my field just here. So they eat. Tonya, they, they could have had the G7 here. Yeah, they, they could have done. <laughs> and then they eat and they go. We've had people in the woodland doing woodland experiences in the pandemic because mm -hmm. mental health is a big thing for us. Mm -hmm. We decided to do that for people that wanted to come here with their families. So we take them around the woodlands. We we do a bit of foraging. I love. See, that is what mm. I love: foraging and then cooking with what you forage. Exactly. What and an I've amazing been, experience. Do you know what, Tonya? I've got no idea about foraging. Really? And I got this forager, local forager, and he, he took me around my own woodland, 
And I can't tell you how much things, how many things we <laughs> so come back with. So, so, what, so what have you got? So it's we've mainly got, mushrooms. We had mushrooms to yeah. start us. I yeah. didn't know You've nothing about. you got mushroom about. soup to start. What yeah. else? We came back with um, um, uh, ortica, which is um, nettle. Mm. So oh. we, we did uh, tempura soup. nettle. Ooh. We did um, tempura risotto. So we've got flowers in there that you can eat. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got mushrooms, as I said. And... I'm looking for truffles at the moment. Yes, it's truffle hunting. I was that's just going to say that. That's, that's, my the, next one, thing. that's the big find. But talking of 2021, big year for lots of different people. I mean, first off, the royal family. I mean, this is where we've seen Harry and Meghan no longer a part of the working royal family. But you've done, again, lots of cooking for the royal family as well. Yeah, I mean, Prince uh, Edward was one of my uh, regulars in uh, Soho and had restaurants. Then I'm a patron of um, Centre Point, which is a, mm -hmm. a homeless charity because I was a homeless myself when I was younger. And, well, uh, don't brush over that. You, yes, were you were homeless yourself as a youngster. How, go on, tell us that. what happened. You know how. Well, how long have you got? Because this is a long story. Well, uh, well give, us the, give us the highlights or the lowlights yeah. light, or whatever you think. It was so. I was 17 and I was stupid enough to go to a different country with no money. Okay. Uh, I ended up with, uh, there was no phones in those days to call mum to send me more money or there was no bank transfers. So I um, ended up uh, with nothing and I slept in phone boxes and, and uh, petrol stations for about a month. And uh, so I'm, I'm patron of the homeless charity in London mm -hmm. and so is Prince William because Princess Diana was. Mm -hmm. uh, Prince William is the same. Uh, he's taken over from uh, Princess Diana, obviously. Did you, did you meet with Princess and then Diana? I met, no, that's one, oh. one of my biggest uh, fan. I was one of the biggest fans of Princess Diana. I never got to meet her. But I met her son, which yeah, is, yeah. you know, uh, I, he's an amazing, an amazing person. And uh, I told him that I can make a mean carbonara, and he said that his son's carbon, his son loves carbonara. So, so you, you never know. So is that he might be here one day. So is that George who loves it? So mm. it's William? that you've yeah. been working George, with and yeah. it's George who loves the carbonara. Yeah, and then the, day, the next day he made it press. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> you tell the wrong people and uh, all, all of a sudden it escalates. Says it. But it has a big year for them. I mean, we all saw that Oprah Winfrey interview. Did you watch the Oprah Winfrey interview with uh, Harry and Meghan? I don't think anybody in this country hasn't watched it. <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of made my heart sink a little bit watching that because I just feel there was something magical about the royal family and that kept them a little bit a step away from us mm. and I like that that's what I liked about the royals when I when I think of the royals I think of the queen and I think of the way she behaves and I think this year it's it must be a very sad and difficult year for her with all that's been coming out and I don't think it's necessary well we'll be hearing it later won't we or yeah. you know this week with the queen's speech so we'll know what if it's what been another Anna as horribleist and what she's hoping for next year and it's a big year for her 2022 yes. isn't it big one. 70 years on the throne Incredible. so no that's a work years. that's a work ethic, <laughs> ethic. if you want to learn if when I think you know I'm feeling tired and whatever I think of the queen 70 years. She's the worked 70 years and she doesn't, she's only recently taken a couple of days I've only off. been 45 years on the throne. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to get off now. <laughs> so talking about people getting on a bit, we heard Captain Sir Tom Moore, yeah. 100 years old. Who My kids are such a big fans. Yes, yeah. because he's well, he, Look, he raised, what, 32 million for the NHS charities together. And he inspired so many people in lockdown. And there he, he was... Just a credit to the nation, wasn't yeah. it? It, you know, it's why we're British. That's what we thought. We exactly. thought how much you've done. Absolutely. Yeah. Never give up. I completely never give up. And on that note, never giving up. I'm not going to give up on this delicious meal. So I'm going to do a quick cheers to you. And because you said that, Merry I'm never going to give up cooking. Oh, never, I will never give up cooking. Salute. Cheers. Salute. 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 Bon Natale. Merry Christmas, Merry everyone. Merry Christmas to you all. <laughs>